What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we are going to go over two pointers. So this is a another coding interview pattern that is very, very common. And uh, let's just start, let's just get, jump right into it. All right, so the first one type of a two pointer is we have, we have a pointer pointing to the front of the list. So it's, it's just like an index or something. It could be anything, right? It's just a pointer pointing to the front of the list. And then we have another pointer pointing to the end of the list. And what we're going to do is we're gonna, as we're moving one of the pointers to the right, the one at the end of the list is going to go down. Okay. And in the end, what's going to happen is we're going to meet in the middle or we're going to stop at a certain condition that follows from this. So that's one of the pattern of two pointers. There's another pattern of the two pointers is when we have one pointer here, which is a, let's say I starts from in the beginning, right? And then another one, J also starts at the same position as I, but I is gonna go one space to the right and J is gonna go twice as fast. So what ends up happening is that I is gonna go to the right and J is gonna go twice as fast. And then as J reaches the end of the condition, um, I is going to reach either to the middle or something happens in the middle and that's going to end the condition and stop it right there. So these are the two types of patterns. One pointing from the beginning into the end, going to the center. Another one is one goes twice as fast than the other one. Okay, so yeah. So let's actually go over some um, essentially really, really uh, basic problems. So the first one is uh, in a sorted array, find if a pair exists with a sum s. So one of the easiest ways here is we're just going to brute force it. So we're going to loop from 0 to n minus 2. And j is going to loop from i plus 1 to n minus 1. So this is going to go from beginning to end. And this is going to go from beginning to the second to last place of the end. And if uh, two values add up equal to s, we return true. Otherwise, return false. So that's like a brute force approach. And here is the more efficient approach, which is uh, utilizing our uh, two-pointer ideas. So here we have pair exists, right? And in here, what, what we're doing is we're starting from the beginning of zero, and then we have J starting from the end. So this is pretty much exactly how I explained in the beginning of the video of having two, one pointing from the beginning and one pointing at end, and we're going to keep decreasing it. Okay, so what, what's going to happen here is that we're going to add the current sum of the first value and then the last value. Okay, and then what we're saying is that if they're both equals to the, or the sum that we want to find, S, then we're just going to return true. Otherwise, what we're going to do is uh, if the current sum is less than uh, some number X, right, some number X, or it's a, uh, actually this should be S. It should be S. Um, yeah, this, they, they wrote this wrong. But if our current sum is less than S, uh, we're just going to move the lower pointer to the right. Um, otherwise, if the current sum is greater than S, then we're going to move the right pointer down by one. And the reason why we're doing this is because if uh, because this array is already sorted, right? If, if this array is already sorted and we move one pointer to the right, um, that's going to increase the sum. Right, so here, if the current sum is less than the value that we're trying to find, we're going to increase the current sum, right? And that'll, that's what we want to do until our condition is met or ends. And if it's greater than our the sum that we're trying to find, if the current sum is greater than the sum we're trying to find, we're going to decrease the right pointer, and that's going to actually decrease the uh, sum of the first one and the last one that we're adding up. Right, because it's sorted, right? So therefore, um, this condition would be met and we will get closer and closer to the target value of S as this loop continues on and then it ends. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's this first approach of the problem of, uh, what is it? In a sorted array, find a pair exists equal to some S. Okay, so yeah, that's this uh, basic problem. All right, here's another one is, um, find the middle of a linked list. So here we're going to utilize the same, uh, the second type of the two pointer, which is one is going to go twice as fast as the starting one. So J is going to go twice as fast and as the starting value of I, which is just going to go normally. 
So in this example, we need to find the middle of a linked list. Um, so yeah, here's a brute force approach, is just you loop to the end and then calculate the length of linked list, and then loop to the beginning again, and then divide it by two, right? That'll, that'll get, definitely get you your, um, that'll definitely get you what, where you wanna find, but uh, yeah, not efficient, because you go twice. So the more efficient approach here is to have two pointers. So we have the slow is gonna slow point is gonna start from the front and the fast is gonna start from the front. And then what we're gonna do is while the fast is not null and the fast next is not null, slow is gonna go next and then fast is gonna go twice as fast. So then in the end, um, as the last pointer goes to the end, the ith pointer, the first the first pointer is gonna reach the middle because it's going tw uh, twice as slow as the second pointer, right? The second pointer is going twice as fast. Then the first pointer is gonna meet in the middle and then we just return that value of slow that's in the middle. Okay, so yeah, how does this pointer uh, receive space? Because it decreases acquired space or we remove it altogether. All right, um, here's another one is uh, reversing an array. So what you could do if the naive solution is going to uh, just loop through it and just copy all the values from the beginning to the end into like the original array, but with a two-pointer approach, we could actually just swap the values. So here, we're going to reverse an array. We're going to start from the beginning. Pointer starting from the beginning, and then the J is going to pointer starting to the end. Um, while the I is less than J, what we're going to do is we're just going to swap I and J. So it's going to reverse the two values at the beginning and the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just move one to the front and move J to the end, uh, move J down by one. And then what's that? What, what that does is um, these values are going to get swapped, 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 and then they get swapped in the end, and then, yeah, they get reversed. So, yeah. Okay, um, another popular example of two-point approach is using um, merge sort, which is not, um, yeah, this is merge two or sorted arrays. Okay, so uh, I'll just explain how the merge sort works. So here, this is a merge sort. Um, we have one array called A, and we have another array called B. And N1 and N2 are just like the size of A and the size of B. And then C is gonna be our merged array, right? That's gonna have twice the size of both uh, A and B. So how does this work? Um, the first pointer is gonna loop through to all the values of A. And the second pointer, J, is gonna loop through all the values of B, okay? So that's what this loop is doing, okay? So if A is less than B, What's that gonna do is that's just going to mean that, hey, um, yeah, A is less than B, so A has to go first in our new array, right? Because we're trying to merge two sorted arrays, so we wanna make sure that our end array is sorted, right? So if A is less than B, um, the value that we are putting in our new array, C, must be the smaller value. So we're gonna set it equal to A, and then we're just gonna move uh, move the, the lower pointer of I add by one, and then K is just gonna be like our um, index of our new array, C. So K is just gonna get add by one. Otherwise, uh, we're, since now, otherwise this means that B is smaller than A, so we're gonna set C is gonna equal to the current value of B, and then K plus plus, and then J, we're gonna increase that pointer plus by one. So then after this, this whole thing is completed and finished, we just have to add up the rest of the values, right? put the rest of the values into the array. So if i is less than n, um, we just put the rest of the values of k, k plus plus, okay? And then also if j is less than n, um, we just put the rest of the values, right? Because there are conditions if we uh, if we stopped in the middle already and we already merged them and they're not the same size, right? We gotta put in the rest of the values in, right? So here that's this puts a's and then this puts b's, okay? So yeah, that, that's another way of using two pointers using in merge sort. And uh, last and not least is a quick sort. Um, I believe, yeah, a partition function to quick sort. Okay, so partitioning is like if I put like a value, like if, let's say if, if I had an array, so let's say I had uh, quick sort partitioning. This is like, um, it's not that hard of an algorithm to understand. 
But basically what it's doing is that if I pick one element, let's say three, all the values that are less than three is gonna go on the left side and all the values that are greater than three goes on the right side. So that's what this picture does. And uh, how it works is, here's how it works. We have two pointers. Um, we pick a pivot, which is like the values that we wanna pick, okay? That wanna go from all the values to go, to move all the values on the left side of that pivot and then to move all the values that's greater on the right side of the pivot, right? So this is like pivot is like what the, what's what's the starting point value we need to put in there, right? Um, here i is going to equal to l minus one, so that's like the uh, lower lower pointer, right? And then j is going to loop from l to r minus one, so j is going to loop through. Um, so if we go back to our picture here, let's say I pick three here. This is a pivot. It's going to loop from here to here, right? To the values before three right and then what it's going to do is if it's smaller than the pivot we're going to add one to our index right to add one to the index and then we're going to swap those values so that those values are going to get uh all the values that's smaller than it we're going to go to the left okay then after this for loop is done we're just going to swap the current value with the last value of the right side and then we just return i plus one so that in the end as the pointers are moving forward um yeah what's gonna happen is like, all the values that are smaller are gonna be on the left side, okay? So yeah, so I think that's what this pivot, uh, this partition is doing. All the values that are smaller than the pivot is gonna go on the left side, so that's why they have this. But yeah, uh, both stars are moving forward in the same direction at the same place, J incrementing as, or, yeah. So yeah, that's basically the first gist of our introduction and let's go move on to some more problems. All right guys, we're gonna go over another problem, remove duplicates from sorted array. So given an array, let's say it's one, one, two, what's going to happen is we're just going to have one and two because the duplicates in this array, one, one is gone. Okay. And we're assuming this is already sorted. Okay. In increasing order. So yeah, the duplicates of one, one are gone and it becomes one, two. And then in the end, um, what they're going to, they want us to do is return like the size of this array. So we'll just return two. So then we don't have to like include the rest of the empty values here. So yeah, also in this uh, example, let's say we have another example, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because all the duplicates got removed. And then we're just going to return the size of the end of the array. So it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It will be 5. Okay. So that's that. And um, here's what the code would look like. And we're going to use two pointers. So here we have, uh, if the size is equal to 0, we just return 0, because like it wouldn't even matter, right, if it's already empty. Now... Our first pointer is going to start from i equals 0. The second one is going to start from j equal to 1. And we're going to loop from j to the equal to the end, less than n. And if j is not equal to i, nums at i, what we're going to do is we're going to increase i, right? So we're going to move the one on the bottom one to up 1. And then we're just going to set i equal to j. And then in the end, we're going to increase j plus 1. And at the end of this, we're going to return i plus 1. So how this would work is that, let's say we have this 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. i starts in the beginning as 0, so this is this is i, right? Starts here. j is going to start from 1, okay? So j is going to loop to the end of this array. Um, so if j is, if nums at j is not equal to i, so here it is equal to i, but so here 1 is equal to 1, right? So in this case, we do nothing, and then we're just going to increase j plus 1. So j is going to go to here, okay? Now, um, does nums at i not equal to j? Yes, they don't equal to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the lower pointer up down by um, lower pointer up to here, right? And this is going to still be, j is still going to be here. Move the lower pointer up, and then we're just going to set the lower pointer is going to equal to the value of j. So this two, one is going to become 2, right? And then, yeah, one is going to become 2, and that's it. And then we move j++. plus plus. So then let's take this j, and we're going to move it up here. And then, um, yeah, once we move up here, we're just going to check is uh, 2, yeah, is uh, 2 equal to 2? It is equal to each other. So, yeah, we're just going to move j up again, because that's the value of that. And then, um, yeah, then 2 is not equal to 3, 
So then now what we're going to do is we're going to move I up. So I gets moved up here. And then what we're going to do is since I is gets moved up, we're going to change this to be three, right? So then this, uh, yeah, if we change this to be three, right? Because this is uh, the value of J. So we change it to go to three and we move J up one. So then J gets moved up, up here. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, at, at that point, uh, at that point, we just return I plus one. So then now we reach the end of the array and then we just return one, two, three. So we just return this. Okay. So yeah, that's basically the gist of how you would use two pointer to solve remove duplicates from sorted array. And let's go to the next problem. All right, guys, the next problem is squares of a sorted array. So given a sorted array, um, we just want to square each of the number and we have to make sure it's in increasing order in the end. So we have negative four, negative one, zero, three, ten. And then after squaring all the numbers, we're going to have zero, one, nine, sixteen, a hundred. So this problem is only difficult if you think about like, um, like if you, if you think about it, like, uh, because of the signs, right? The signs make it an issue of squaring it. Right. But, uh, yeah, let's just go to the solution and show you guys how you use two pointers for this. So here's the solution. How you do it, um, we're gonna create a new array called result. And then the lower point is gonna start from the zero and then the right point is gonna start from the end, right? So it's basically very similar to how what we did, um, how we explained in the previous video or the previous beginning of the video, right? So let's say we have this uh, negative four, minus one, zero, three, and then 10, okay? So what we're gonna do here is, um, okay, well, the starting value is zero and the last value is gonna start to the end. So here, here is a starting uh, pointer of I and here is gonna start, J is gonna start the end. And then we're gonna have another array, um, a resulting array, right? So this is like the final result of our array. So like, um, I have no idea, it's just like this. I don't know, <laughs> just like these. Okay, yeah, that was that's fine. Okay, so like, yeah, this is like the final end result of our array. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through. We're gonna loop through from the right side of I. So, um, yeah, I call left and right, I and J. But here, um, they have a third pointer here starting at the end of this. So this is gonna be like the end result that we're gonna start from. Okay, so if the left, if the right side, the absolute value of the right side. So if 10, absolute value of 10 is greater than the absolute value of left side, which it is, right? So 10 is greater than four. What we're gonna do is we're gonna square 10. So 10 is gonna become 100 and we're gonna put that in our end of our array. And then we're gonna move array down by one. Okay, and then we're gonna move J down by one. So this is gonna move down to here. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is, um, yeah, we, we, we repeat this process. So then um, is three greater than four, right? Absolute value three, is it greater than four? No, it's not. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to have add a, four, a negative four square into here. So this is gonna become 16. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our ith pointer to the right. So it's gonna be here, okay? And then uh, we do the same thing is negative one, uh, is, is three greater than negative one, uh, th three greater than one, right? Absolute value of one. So yes, three is greater than one. So um, we're just gonna put nine, right? We square three square, give nine. And then we move the three down to here. And then we're gonna say is negative one um, greater than, is zero greater than one? Um, no, it's not. So we're gonna add one into our array, uh, one, negative one square, which is gonna be one into our array. And then we move I up. Okay, and then zero, we're just gonna put zero in there in the end. So in the end, we're gonna have zero, one, nine, 16, 100, which is, I believe zero, one, nine, 16, 100. Yeah, which is exactly what we want. And all the values here are the square values of here. And then, yeah, we just return that. So yeah, that's the gist of this code. 
and it's still using two pointers, and that's squares of sorted array. All right, guys, we're going to go over another problem called three sum. Given an array of numbers, return all the triplets of values of i, j, and k where they're not equal to each other, each other, not equal to each other, but their sums are equal to zero, right? So here we have negative one, zero, one, two, negative one, negative four, and um, negative one, negative one, two, right? These values are not the same, right? They're not in the same indexes and they're not in, yeah, they're just not the same, but um, yeah, they're not the same indexes, right? But their sums, negative one plus negative one plus two is equal to zero. So that's why this is a uh, inside one array. And then here uh, they have another value of negative one, zero, one, which are different indexes also. And their sums are equal to zero. And yeah, that's the return the array. So let's actually just go with, look at the solution because it uses um, it uses the two pointer rule. Okay, so here, let's just look at how it works. So we have um, sorted, we ha first we should sort the array because in order to do two pointers, they have to be sorted. To do our two pointer rule, they have to be sorted, okay? So um, here, we're gonna loop from the beginning to the end of our value of uh, numbers, right? We're gonna loop from the beginning to the end of the array. Um, if it's greater than zero and it's equal to the previous value, um, Generally, you j we're just going to continue and not check it because uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to have at find three values that add up equal to add up and they're equal to zero, right? And if it's equal to the previous value, ideally that doesn't mean that they're going to add up to zero, right? Normally, they're ideally they wouldn't add up to zero. So yeah, if i is greater than zero and they're not they're equal to the previous value the current number is equal to the previous value we're just going to continue okay here so here's here's when the two pointer starts so let's actually just clear this okay so let's go back to the description of the problem and i'll sh show you guys the example how this would work and then we'll be on our way okay and then we'll do the next problem it's the internet's taking a while for me. Okay, so we have negative one, zero, one, two, negative one, four. So we have negative one, zero, one, two, negative one, four. Okay, and then we want to return negative one, negative one, two, negative one, zero, one. Okay, so here, after sorting it, it's going to be like we have negative one, uh, ne negative one, uh, zero, one, two, and four. Okay. So after sorting it, our new array looks like this. So let's get rid of this, and get rid of this, get rid of this, and this is gonna be our array, okay? So then now, um, if the current value i is equal to the previous value, so here we start from here, right? Uh, i is, we're gonna skip the first part because i is equal to zero, right? So this condition doesn't get run. All right, we're gonna here. We're gonna have, L is gonna equal to I plus one. So this is this is I. This is L. This is the left side of our pointer, and right is gonna equal to the end. So here, this is right. Okay. Um. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just sum them. So if L is less than R, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum I plus L plus R. So here we're gonna add this plus this plus this. So it's gonna equal to two, right? Two. So. Negative one plus negative one plus four is two. Now, if it's greater than zero, we're gonna move the right pointer down. So, because two is greater than zero, and what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the three numbers that add to zero. Um, since two is greater than zero, that means the sum is too large. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the right pointer down to decrease our sum. So we're gonna move the right pointer down. Okay, and then, yeah, and this ends there. Um, then we go back to the top here, and then we're gonna do I plus I plus L plus R. So I plus L plus R is equal to zero, right? So it's equal to zero. So since it's equal to zero now, we're going to push back. So we're going to add um, negative one, negative two, uh, negative one, negative one, two into our new array. So this is going to be negative one, negative one, two. So this is going to be like the one of the answers there. And then um, now we're going to do while L is equal to L plus one. So while this is just going to equal to this is just going to keep moving the pointer down if they have the same values, right? Because we don't want to, yeah, we're just, we don't want to like continue 
having the same values that we looped through. So yeah, um, because L is not equal to L plus one, this for loop does not run. Uh, this while loop does not run. This R equal to R minus one. Nope. And this doesn't run. Then what we're going to do is we're going to move L plus one and then R minus one. So here we're going to move L plus one, move it to top and R is going to minus one, just going to move down. Okay. And then this L statement uh, ends there. And then we'll go back to the top and we're going to do I plus L plus R. So here we're going to do negative one plus zero plus one. And that gives us zero. So then we're going to push this value, negative one, zero, one. It's going to get added again. And then um, while L is equal to L plus one, so it's not equal to it. And while R is equal to R minus one, it's not equal to it also. Um, yeah, then we're going to do L plus L plus plus and R minus minus. So L is going to get incremented to here and R is going to get minus. R is going to move down here. And then because L is now uh, not less than R, this loop ends. And then, um, yeah, and then we go back to the top and Ah, uh, yeah, then I goes to the front of the, this here, right? And then we do this pretty much the exact same thing. So, so yeah, then after I moves here, um, does I equal to the previous value? Does I, uh, does I equal negative one is equal to the previous value? It is. So we're going to continue. So we're just going to go to the next uh, iteration of I. So I is going to move to the right. And then um, we do just do the exact same thing. So L is going to equal to I plus one. So L is here. And then R is going to equal to the end. So just this one. And then um, we do the exact same thing with some zero plus one plus four. But these are all greater than zero. So we could just like end it right here. Technically, we could just end this right here. Because we wanted the sum equal to zero. But yeah, he didn't have a break statement. But yeah. Um, that's pretty much then at the end we just return this and yeah that's pretty much the gist of the code and that's how you do three sum is equal to zero all right guys we're gonna go over another problem three sum closest uh bear with me guys because my throat is hurting for some reason yeah and i think i'm getting a little sick from allergies anyway so we're given this is very similar to the previous problem except now our target is now a different number and we want to find the closest uh triple sum that gets you to the target so we have negative one, two, and one, negative four, and our target is one. And the closest triple sum is two, because if you, if the closest sum, that is, the sum of three integers is negative one plus two plus one, and that's equal to two, and that's closest to one, okay? And here we have zero, 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 and the target is one. The closest triple sum of zero plus zero plus zero is, is, is uh, zero, and that's close to one. So let's just go to the solution right now, because, um, yeah, if you do uh, two pointers with the solution, it's not that hard. Okay, so first we have to sort it, sort it, because in order to do two pointers, generally the the array has to be sorted, right? Because otherwise you can't really do the sliding window or not sliding window, the, the two pointer rule. So here we sort the array, we're going to have a the size, a variable size, and then we have the first answer, which is just zero plus one plus two. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to loop from zero to the uh, second to last, second to last value, and then we're going to start a two pointer from there. So if we were to do this again, right here, so let's say we had like, I don't know what it was. Um, I forgot what, I don't even know what it was there, to be honest. So let's say we had like negative one, two, three, four, I don't know. And we want to find like, uh, the closest, which is the sum, which would be three, right? Let's let's say we want to find the closest of three. And in this case, it would be like negative one, two, negative one plus two is one uh, plus, actually, not three, uh, uh, five, right? Let's, let's say we want to find the closest sum to five. So we do this, right? Closest sum is five. So then we, the closest sum would be negative one plus two plus four, which would be five, right? That's would be that would be our answer, but uh, so let's how how we would do this. We start from here, and then we're gonna loop this up to the second to the last value to three, and uh, we're gonna start our two pointers. So here we start left. It's gonna point to the start value of i plus one. So this is left, and then right would go to the end, which is this one. Right, this would be right, 
And then we do this exact same thing. So we're going to do like the sum of this i plus l, which is the n plus 4. And that'll actually give us 5, though. And then we what we're going to do is, um, here's the only difference, is that we're going to take the answer and subtract by the target. So if like, when we, and um, yeah, so what we're doing essentially is that like, answer is like the first three sums, right? So it's uh, this plus this plus this, right? Right, uh, one plus four, right? So if our answer is subtract by target, so that's that's gonna represent how far we are from the target. And if it's greater than the the sum that the sum that we just calculated. So if it's greater than this sum, this plus this plus this, right? Um, minus the target value, which is the one we're finding five, then what we're gonna do is that'll be our answer, right? Answer would equal to that. And then we just go continue. Um, yeah, our answer would be, we would have to shift the sum, right? So like the sum would now equal to uh, the new sum, the closest sum would now equal to negative one plus two plus four, right? Because that's closer to it, right? Because this value is closer to it. Um, otherwise, what we're, what we're gonna do is uh, if it's equal to a target, like exactly equal to five, we're just gonna break. So in our case, we would do negative one plus four, two plus four, and that's actually equal to five. So then we would just break, okay? And then um, if it's greater than target, what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease the right corner because that means that that means that our target is is, is, is too much, right? There's, uh, the value is too much. So when you decrease the right corner size, it actually lowers the sum value of your next sum because since it's already sorted, the last value four is like greater than three. So if we move the right corner down, so if we move from four to three, this actually decreases like the next sum. So that's why if we want to find our our target sum and it's our, if the values are greater than it, like the three sums are actually greater than the target, we should decrease the right corner, okay? Otherwise, if it's less than the target, we're gonna move the left corner up. So we're gonna move this up. So uh, in our case, it's actually exactly equal to the target, right? Because negative one plus two plus four is like exactly equal to five. So in that case, this would actually just break and that'll be our answer. But yeah, uh, that's basically the two-pointer rule. We're using, this is technically a three-pointer rule because we're using I and then L and R goes through it. So it's like a N squared algorithm or yeah, N squared algorithm uh, in total. But yeah, this is better than N cubed. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and then let's just go to the next problem. All right, guys, we're gonna go and go over another problem called count triplets with some smaller than the target. So it's pretty much the exact same problem as the previous one, except instead of finding the closest one, we want to find the one that is just smaller than it. Okay. So yeah, if we had negative two zero one three, the out the sum in our target is two. We want to find the count the number of triplets with a sum smaller than two. Right, so here there would be two triplets, negative two, zero, one, and negative two, zero, three that are just smaller than two. But yeah, um, yeah. So let's just go to, directly to the solution. I'll show you guys what how to do it, because it's pretty much very similar. Okay, so we first sort the array because you have to do it in order to do two pointer. That's the that's the only downfall downside of it. But yeah, you sort the array and you initialize the result equal to zero. Okay, we're gonna loop from zero to n minus two again, which is just going to be like, the reason why it's n minus two, because uh, like I said in the last video, uh, not last video, last part is that if you, um, if you had like an array of like, uh, let's just go to this example, um, five, two, three, four, seven, right? So five, two, five, one, five, one, three, four, seven. Um, our two pointer is going to like, we have the first pointer here, right? And then we're, we're going up to this part because like the second to last, because our two pointers are actually going to start from here, I plus one, and then J is going to be at the end, right? Our left, left and right. R and then L, right? And then as we decrease this size window to try to calculate with this one, then we move I to the right. So that's why it's like, I, uh, that's why it's, I plus one, right? That's why it's uh, n minus two, right? We're going to the second to the last value for I. 
Anyway, yeah, we got second to last. Um, here they call it J and K. I'll just call left and right because that's just what I did in the previous ones. But yeah, I is going to equal loop from here to the end. Left is going to equal to I plus one, and right is all the way on the right side again. Okay, so then we're just going to meet in the middle. So we're going to decrease increase L and decrease R. Um, so how this works is that the only difference is now is that um, so we're still going to sum I plus J plus K. So we're still going to sum this plus this plus this, right? The values that are three pointers. Um, but this time, if it's greater or equal to sum, so if it's so if our target, let's say our target was like S, right? Our target is S. So if if it's greater than or equal to S, we're going to move the right pointer down. So we're going to move this down. Okay, and then. Yeah. Otherwise, um, what we're do, what we want to do is we want to calculate the number of subarrays that was it subarrays? No, the number of triplets that are just smaller than the given value, or the sum smaller than the given value. So, if it's smaller than it, right? So let's say this plus this plus that is smaller than the given value of s. Then what we want to do is um, we're actually gonna since we want to calculate the number of it, number of number of triplets that are, that are like that. Um, we're going to take the right pointer of this R and subtract it from L. Okay. And the reason why is because, so let's say if our sum was like, I don't know, 14, like just greater than 13, right? So let's say, let's say our sum was like, uh, I don't know, 13 or something, 14. Oh, I just realized this has to be sorted. My bad. Um, okay, so let me just move this real quick. Eh. This has to be sorted. Let's move this, move this real quick. Here, okay, so, yeah. So let's say our sum was like, 14, right? Um, so, so 1 plus 3 plus 7 is 11, right? 1 plus 3 plus 7 is 11, right? The I plus J plus K. Um, yeah, so since it's, it's less than 14, uh, we want to calculate the, the, the number of different triplets, right? Count, uh, count the number of triplets that are smaller than it. So because we know that, um, because it's sorted, we know that this triplet, this, this and this are are like all smaller than the 14. So we know like one plus three plus four is 14, right? Then because this, the right value and it's sorted is greater than all the previous values, right? So seven is greater than four plus five. We know immediately that the sum one plus three plus seven, right? And uh, the sum, all the values between left and right the sum of all the values between left and right are going to also be smaller than it, right? So here, I'll, I'll explain why. Because like the sum 1 plus 3 plus 7 is, um, is this, right? Which is uh, 11, right? And because 7 is the largest value in, in our sorted array, we know that the values of um, 4 and 5 are also going to be smaller than seven. So one plus three plus four, uh, yeah, plus four, we, we know immediately this is going to be smaller than 11, right? So this is like eight. And we know immediately that one plus three plus five, which is equal to nine, this is also smaller than 11. So because of that, we could, since we know because it's already sorted, and we know these two situations, we could just, if we want to count how many, um, how many triplets are smaller than it, we just take the index of the right minus index of the left. Okay, so here if we have um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the index of the right is this 7, uh, yeah, no, 4, and the index of the left is 1, so 4 minus 1 will give us 3, and these values are going to be 
um, all smaller than it. Okay, so that'll be the counter that we add to our answer. And then we're gonna move our left pointer up. So we're gonna we're gonna move our left pointer up, and then do the exact same thing. Okay, and then check this, this plus this plus this. See if it's smaller. Then we subtract r minus l, and do the exact same thing. Okay, and after this gets done, we end up with counting all the triplets that have a sum smaller than the given value. Okay. So yeah, that's the gist of the code. Uh, let's just go to the next problem. All right, guys. So now we're going to go over subarray product less than K. So given an array of integers and a value of K, we need to return the number of contiguous subarrays whose product of all the values are less than K. So yeah, this is exactly the same thing. Um, the only difference now is just multiplying. So I think it's like, oh, return the number of contiguous subarrays. But yeah. So if we just go to go to the solution, I, you you'll exactly you'll see like exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, um, oh wow, this guy used like I don't know what he used here. Uh, this is actually unreadable. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to deal with like super unreadability. Um, is this one? Also unreadable. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, let's see if we find one that's actually readable. Okay. Yeah. I, I, this is like the closest thing that's readable. Okay. So um, if k is less than or equal to one, return zero because all the numbers are positive in the array. So you can't really do anything there. All right. So here we're going to have our two pointers left zero and then right. Uh, result is just like the answer product is like the current product. Okay, so we're gonna move the right from zero to the end and we're just gonna keep multiplying by the values um, If our product is greater than or equal to K, we'll divide by the numbers on the left pointer And increase left pointer um, so like if Yeah, and then Yeah, so like what this is doing is like okay here. I'll show you so let's say we had, um, let's see. So let's say we have 10, 5, 2, 6, right? So we have 10, 5, 2, 6, 10, 5, 2, 6. Okay. And our uh, k is equal to 100. Did they sort it? I'm pretty sure they sorted it. Otherwise, how would they do this? They didn't sort it. Okay, that's even more crazy. All right. So th this answer did not use any sorting for some reason. Um, so I don't think they're using like the same two pointer algorithm, but they're doing like um, they're doing like a similar sliding window. Okay, so they're gonna loop from here to here. Okay, so this is like uh, this is the right pointer. They're gonna loop from here to there. there. And during the time, they're going to just keep like a track multiplying how many elements they're current multiplying at. So like here, the prod would just be like five, 10, right? And then they go to the next one, five and so on and so forth. So 10, is this greater than uh, 100? No, oh, is it less than 100? So it's not, right? So then they're just going to keep going to the right. So this condition never gets run. This never gets run. So what they're doing is so it's not greater than K, right? Um, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna take R minus left, which left they set equal to zero. So it would be R minus zero plus one. So they will be like, it will just be one, right? So like our answer would get incremented to one. So here would become one, okay? And then, um, yeah, and then we go to the next value. So then here, R is gonna go to this part, okay? And our product is gonna be like 10 times five, which would be 50. Okay, and then um, is it greater than or equal to K? No, it's not. So what we're gonna do is uh, our left is still pointing to the left value. So this is our left. Right, this is our left. 
So it would be uh, r minus 0 plus 1 should be 2. So this is going to get added by 2. So this becomes 3. Okay, that becomes 3. And then r gets moved to the right again. Okay, and then what's going to happen is we're going to multiply this by 100. So this becomes, no, not by 150 times 2 would become uh, 50 times 2 would become 100, right? So this is our product now. So this is prod, by the way, product. 50 times 2 would be 100. And then uh, now it's greater than or equal to k. So then what they're going to do is they're going to divide by this left, this value. And the reason why they're doing that is that's going to decrease like the window. And then when it gets decreased, they move L to the right. So then now, um, yeah. So now they're going to decrease to divide by 10, which is going to get give us 10. So 100 becomes 10. So let's get rid of this. 100 now becomes 10. Okay. And then uh, is 10 greater than or equal to K? It's not. So then we're done with that. And then we're going to take right minus left plus 1. So here it would be right, which would be 2. Minus left would be 1. Plus 1 would be 2 minus 1 plus 1 is 2, so this plus 2, this becomes 5. So our answer it will now be 5. Let's get rid of this. And yeah, answer would be 5. And then we just continue again. Um, R multiplied by, go back to the top. R is going to go to the here. Multiply this by 6, which is going to become 60, right? So this is going to be 10 times 6 is 60. Okay, and then, uh, is that it? I think I think that's it. Yeah. Um, it's not greater than k. Then we take r minus left, which would be 3, minus 1, which is 2, plus 1, which would be uh, 3. 3 minus 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So plus 3, this would become 8. Okay, and then it's done, and then we just return that. So, what um, what essentially what it's doing is like, it's doing the exact same thing except um, as we're going to the right, uh, this should actually, personally, I think this should be sorted, but I don't know. But yeah, I don't know why it's like not. Um, what it's bas basically is doing is like as we're going to the right, we're maintaining a variable called product. And then um, if it's like, if it's, if our current product is like uh, greater than or equal to K, which is our answer, what we're going to do, um, because we want smaller than it, right? Um, we're just going to divide by like the left pointer, right? The line provide, divide by the left value on the left pointer, and that's going to decrease it. And then we're going to move our left pointer upwards. So then th that's going to give us the next window that is uh, the next uh, length of our window that we could, that that our, all the values are going to also be uh, smaller than k. Okay, because when we plus equal to it, it'll give us all the values that are smaller than it. Okay, so yeah, um, that's the gist of this, and I think I think we're all, I think that's all the problems we have.